Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here. And the lab coat is still on back order. Now, for this week's Pokemon TCG Live Online match, we're going to breathe new life into a previous creation that's been long forgotten. I'm speaking about the Victory Bell Drag LG deck that I used in a previous video. However, this week we will be breathing new life into this infectious creation by instilling some cards from the Ancient Origins expansion to update it to today's standard. Prepare yourselves for a terror unlike anything you've ever seen before. It's time to check out the deck list. And I promise you this, I will not be speaking like this for the full video, so don't worry about that. Let's begin. So we are once again taking a look at the Victor Bell Drag Algae deck, which I was going to name Toxic Locks, but I don't know. I don't know if I care for the sound of that. I'm just going to go with Victor Bell Drag Algae. So the main Pokemon in this deck, if you remember from the last time, are going to be Victory Bell. Here we have it with the Wafting Scent. So once during your turn before your attack, you may discard a Grass Energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused and poisoned. Wafting Scent is going to be the main purpose of Victory Bell in this deck. It's going to work well in conjunction with Dragology's ability, Poison Barrier. Your opponent's Poison Pokemon can't retreat. So, whereas they could normally retreat back to the bench to cure themselves of special conditions, Victory Bell's Poison and uh, Confusion is going to stay in effect because the opponent will not be able to retreat. Therefore, if they try to attack, there is a coin flip, and if they flip tails, they're actually going to put three damage counters on themselves. Now, another way to prevent them from attacking back is going to be Watchog. The Thorough Crunch attack, which is two, uh, takes two colorless energy, does 30 damage, and it says flip two coins. For each heads, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So with some lucky coin flips, you can discard two energy cards that are attached. The other Pokemon in this deck is going to be Quillfish, who is mainly here for the counterattack Quill's ability, and we want to keep it active as much as possible, because if this Pokemon is active and is damaged by an opponent's attack, put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So that's going to be the Pokemon for the deck. We do have um, two Pat Rat, two Watchhog, and two Bellsprout, two Weeping Bell, two Victory Bell. We got two of each actually: two Skrelp, two Dragology, and two Quillfish. And the energy cards. We're going to scroll down here. We do have for basic energy. We've got ten basic Grass energy because we're going to be using a lot of that for the Wafting Scent for uh, Victory Bell. Two Psychic Energy and two Water Energy to power up the Dragology if it needs to go into battle, but it's also going to be able to power up the Watchhog and Quillfish, both of which require Colorless Energy. And speaking of Colorless, we are including two Double Colorless Energy in the deck, and just in case we don't get to draw the Psychic or Water Energy we need, I am including one Double Dragon Energy just to help Dragology get powered up a little bit quicker, and if it does see itself on the front lines, it's going to be able to power up two Energy cards that it requires. Now, for the trainer cards, since we are discarding a lot of energy, we are going to go with two energy retrievals. We did have Minin in the deck originally, whose first attack did the same thing as this energy retrieval. You get to draw, or return two basic energy cards from the discard pile back to your hand. But given the new trainer cards I've included in this set, and the fact that originally I didn't have access to the energy retrieval because it was from a previous set that I was collecting, uh, Minin was filling the role for these energy retrievals. However, since we do have them, Minin had to make way for some more trainer cards that we've included. There is also an Evo Soda to help evolve the Pokemon, two Great Balls and a Level Ball for searching purposes, a Professor's Letter to get some basic energy, and Revive. I might not keep this in the deck for very long, but from the Roaring Sky set I included Revive, just in case we do lose one of our basic Pokemon, because Having only two of each Pokemon in the deck means if I lose, say, both Pat Rat, I'm not going to be able to get Watchhog into play. So having a Watchhog in hand and both Pat Rat inaccessible is going to be a little bit annoying and unfortunate. So Revive is there to help us bring back some of these Pokemon in case they get knocked out. We've also got a Startling Megaphone, as I've learned from playing against uh, my nephew. When he attached a Sparkling Robe to one of his Pokemon, I was not able to use the Wafting Scent to affect it, because the Sparkling Robe prevents all special conditions. So for that purpose, I did include the Startling Megaphone, but it comes in handy in other ways too. If the opponent has a Hard Charm or a Lucky Helmet attached, we're going to be able to get rid of that using the Startling Megaphone. I have two Ultra Balls as well, also for searching purposes, and two Versus Seekers to bring back any of the supporters that we're going to need, and as you'll see, we're only running one of each kind of supporter in this deck. So the Versus Seeker is basically going to give you access to any of those supporters up to two more times once you've used one of them. 
And those supporters are Lysandre, Pokemon Center Lady for healing, Pokemon Fan Club to get a couple basic Pokemon, Professor Birch's Observations to draw some more cards, Professor Sycamore also to draw cards by discarding your hand, Steven to help you find another one of these supporters and a basic energy card, Team Flare Grunt, which will work with the Watchhog's Thorough Crunch to discard another energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. And Teammates, which is one of my favorite cards because if you're running a deck that you you know, you know understand you are going to get knocked out here and there, Teammates is going to be very useful because it lets you search your deck for any two cards of your choice if your opponent knocked out one of your Pokemon on their last turn. So not even you know search for a Pokemon, search for an energy, no, search for any two cards, which is a very powerful aspect of any kind of a searching card. Tierno is here as well for draw purposes, and Wally to help you get some more evolved Pokemon, sort of like the Evo Soda. And Zero Stick, I always like to run this guy because you can discard a special energy or a tool attached to either Pokemon, you know, either player's Pokemon. So more than likely you're gonna use it to get rid of your opponent's special energies and you know tools and such like that. But in rare instances you might need to get rid of your own tool or energy, and Zero Stick will let you do that. Now the only stadium in this deck is going to be the Forest of Giant Plants. Mainly it's in here just to be able to get the Bellsprout, Weeping Bell, Victory Bell line into play a little bit faster. Originally I had the Mountain Ring in the deck, and the main purpose of the Mountain Ring, it didn't affect my strategy at all because we don't attack the bench. Mountain Ring was basically just there to discard my opponent's stadium if they played one, and replace it with an effect that only benefited me. So by not having damage done to bench Pokemon, my bench Pokemon, such as Victory Bell and Dragology, will be protected, and we wouldn't have to worry about, the, you know, hindering ourselves because we weren't attacking the bench. But, all that being said, we decided to make way for a stadium that will actually give us a more useful benefit, which is the Forest of Giant Plants, to get Victory Belt into play a little quicker. The two tools of the deck, and we, all, look, we already had the Trick Coin in here, the idea is to attach this to the Watch Hog to get Thorough Crunch a little more reliable with discarding energy cards. It also comes in handy with Screlp or Dragology too, if they do happen to be up in the active spot, and trying to get some poison with their two attacks. But we also included, from the Ancient Origins, the Lucky Helmet. As I said in the past, this is a two-fold item. It is good for, like, if you take damage, it lets you draw two cards and, you know, possibly get some good cards in your hand to use on your next turn. But it's also a good deterrent to keep your opponent from hitting you with low damage attacks to try to slowly chip away at you. They're not going to want you to draw two cards every time they hit you for a 10 or 20 damage attack. So you're going to slow the opponent's attacks of you or, you know, upon your Pokemon with a little bit if you're using the Lucky Helmet. So that is the 60-card deck of the Victory Bell Drag Algae deck, and let's get into a match on Pokemon TCG Online and see how well it fares with the new additions from Ancient Origins. And now it's time to see how well the Victory Bell Drag Algae deck fares against the Fire-type deck of my opponent, Deviliate. We're going to flip for the heads. We're going to get the head, so we'll, we'll take the first turn to get ourselves set up a little bit more quickly. And my opponent has a good deal of fire energy, blacksmith, couple of pokeballs here. Good to know. And a Delphox, a couple of Pokemon Center ladies as well, and a Sycamore. We're getting some good information off these mulligans. So definitely looking at my hand, my starter will be the Quillfish mostly for the uh, counter-attack Quill's ability, but also, if he does have fire Pokémon, we're going to be super effective against that with Quillfish. So my opponent is making the first selection of which Pokémon to put into the active slot. I do have Bellsprout in hand as well. I'm going to be able to uh, get, hopefully, the Victor Bell in play before too long. And I'm going to throw that Tierno down and draw a few extra cards as soon as the uh, turn begins. Of course, thanks to my opponent having two mulligans, I have the option of drawing two additional cards at the start. And my opponent seems to be inactive, apparently, according to Cammy here. But, there we go, they just snap back to attention. And the starting Pokémon has been selected. Quillfish goes to the active spot, and Bellsprout takes a seat on the bench. Yeah, we'll get a couple of cards for the mulligans, why not? And another Quillfish, I'll hang on to it for now. Never know, I might want to discard it using an Ultra Wall or something like that. So, first up, let's choose to use Tierno. I'm hoping to get a double colorless, which I didn't, but I do have another, or I have a basic energy to attach. We're going to throw down the Great Ball. 
He refined Weeping Bell and Victory Bell. That is the question. Which one do I go for? I think Weeping Bell simply because I'll be able to play it next turn, whereas Victory Bell I would have to hang on to. I had a Weeping Bell in hand I just now noticed, so I should have chosen that Victory Bell, but shows what, you know, if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, that's how things can go. We're going to pass the turn to my opponent. So they do have two Fennekin in their play field, one active and one benched. The benched one is getting the energy attached to it. They probably realize Quillfish is going to floor this active Fennekin in a single hit when the poison takes effect. Of course, I did just get a Lissandre. So let's put a Weeping Bell down to the bench. And we are going to attach an energy. Just to take care of that fire energy, although they do have Blacksmith. I don't know if it's going to make that much of a difference. You know what? Why not? Let's bring up that Fennekin. I was thinking if I knock out this Fennekin and discard the energy from it, then they have no access to it. But thanks to the Blacksmith, they could easily reattach it to another one of their fire Pokemon. There's that double colorless I was looking for. And if they have no more benched Pokemon, this match is all but wrapped up. Now, you're really going to attack, you're going to get hit by counterattack quills. I don't think that's in your best interest, sir. Of course, Ace Trainer now comes into effect, so we're going to shuffle both of our hands. I draw three cards because I'm in the lead, and my opponent gets to draw six. That could be a game changer at this point in the, uh, the battle. And a Charizard EX. I remember you very, not fondly, but I remember you. We'll just leave it at that. Alright, so my opponent has just played the level ball and got the breaks in out of the deck. And a training center has been played. That's going to help uh, my Weeping Bell and Victory Bell as well. Question is, how do I want to play this? I can easily get Victory Bell using the Wally card. If I have a Grass Energy, I'm going to be able to use the Wafting Scent. I could withdraw... No, I was going to say, I could withdraw the Quillfish. And lose a grass energy that way, but I have no way to retrieve it, so that's not really going to help us. I was just thinking, because I have double colorless in hand, I could attach that to the Quillfish to be able to use its poison sting. But I think Quillfish is set where it is right now, being active, it's going to use its ability, and super effective damage on these Pokemon weak to water types on my opponent's side of the field. Now, the Clairvoyant Eye allows them to look at the three top three cards of their own deck and rearrange them however they like. Okay. So they're going to set themselves up for next turn. we got to do as much damage to them this turn as possible. Sometimes it's hard, like, we have three really good cards. You have to think, which of those three cards do I need immediately on the next turn? Because you never know what your opponent might happen to play as well. So we're going to get the Victory Bell. We cannot use the Wafting Scent because we have no Grass Energy attached to it just yet. I do have an energy retrieval now, but I would have to retreat and lose more energy that way, so I'm not really going to do that. I'll just go with a nice, simple Poison Sting for 20 times 2 damage, and the poison has taken effect. Breakson is now 30 HP away from fainting. And Team Flare Grunt will discard an energy. I have two ways to get around that, either the energy retrieval, and this Charizard's powering up. I could also use the Double Colorless if need be. So with one fire energy attached and another of any energy, this Charizard EX is going to be able to use that fire blast. And there's that retreat I was talking about. Fortunately, this Fennekin will be taken down in a single poison sting. There's another Victory Bell, which we currently do not need. And I do have an energy that I could retrieve right now. I'm going to hang on to that for the time being. I'll just attach the double colorless and do a poison sting for 40. The poison will knock Fennekin out between turns. And I just realized previously when I was saying Brixen was 30 HP away from fainting, I forgot the training center actually adds more HP. So here comes the big guns, Charizard EX against the Victory Bell deck. Let's see how this showdown ends up. We're going to try to use the Stoke attack. And if they flip their heads... They didn't. I was like, if they flip ahead, I'm sure we'll be fine. Because we have options now. We're going to energy retrieval. Bring back just the one grass energy. I'm not a fan of using energy retrieval just to get one card back, but sometimes that's what you need to do. So we're going to wafting scent to confuse and poison that Charizard EX. 
just in case they do get the attack off, we're going to attach a lucky helmet to Quillfish, and we're going to go for some super effective poison sting damage, 40 plus 10 from the poison. We're in a good spot. Charizard EX has a, okay, Pokemon Center Lady. I would like to get another Grass Energy, please. Stoke is effective this time, and they're going to get up to three basic energy cards from the deck attached to that Charizard. Energy Retrieval, thank you very much. Well, again, I just used it for one card, but this is a, these are dire straits. We're going to need to go for it. Wafting Stent once again. Poison and Confuse. And let's do another a Poison Sting for a good 40 damage. And 10 between turns for the Poison. Hopefully they're going to hurt themselves, which they do not, but we do at least get the Lucky Helmet effect. And Charizard takes some damage from the counterattack quills as well. Now what we're going to need to get is a double color list to start biting some of these energies off. So we're going to evolve to Watch Hog. We will add Skrulp to the bench. And I believe I have a Tierno in here. Yes, I'm going to Versus Seeker the Tierno back because we are in a little bit of uh, desperate need of some more cards. Three additional cards are drawn. We didn't get the double color list, but we will attach a grass to Watch Hog. Let's use the held item inspection, see what's in my opponent's hand. We see one item and a fire energy. So we're going to shuffle that Ultra Ball back into their deck. 90 HP remaining on that Charizard EX. They are powering that breaks enough. If they can evolve it into Delphox, they're going to be able to... Well, Charizard hurts itself, which is a definitely a good thing in our favor. 50 HP left. There is another energy. I could use the Zero Sick to get rid of it, but I'm going to hang on to that because that Charizard is pretty much doomed at this point. Evo Soda will allow me to evolve Skrulp into Dragalge, preventing my opponent's poison Pokemon from retreating for this. And let's use the Thorough Crunch... 30 damage, flip two coins. For each heads, I can discard an energy. I think... Yeah, I might as well get rid of all of it. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of the double colorless, I believe. I don't want them to be able to use a blacksmith to get rid of, or to retrieve energy onto the Brakeson, since this Charizard is about to faint right now. They'll have to wait until the next turn to be able to use blacksmith. So we're not doing too bad. Brakeson has 60 HP left. Two thorough crunches could do the job. And Versus Seeker is going to bring back... Did they use a Sycamore yet? No, an Ace Trainer, though. That's all right. I didn't have too much to work with in my hand anyway. So three new cards for myself. There's the Forest of Giant Plants, and they did get the Delphox. So now they can draw once per turn up to having six cards in their hand. Entei and Fennekin have joined the battle as well. Charizard does manage to get the Stoke. This is actually not a bad idea. Even though the Charizard will faint to the burn, or the poison, they can still get this fire energy discarded, and a blacksmith could then reattach it to another Pokemon next turn. So who will they send up? The only one powered up is that Delphox. I'm going to gain two prize cards from that. So let's use the Wafting Scent. Poison and Confuse on the Delphox once again. We want to get rid of the stadium, so we're going to just play the Forest of Giant Plants. And I'm going to Versus Seeker, Tierno, back once again, because I'm hoping to get that Trick Coin. Come on, Tierno. No Trick Coin. Another Bell Sprout. I think I'm going to Ultra Ball for the uh, Quillfish. Quillfish number two, I should say. On to the bench it goes. So let's use the Thorough Crunch. Nice 30 damage, and for each heads, one of which I got, I will discard an energy attached to their Pokemon. 50 HP left. 110 HP left, and no longer poisoned or confused. So that's a very powerful Blaze Ball. Alright, Quillfish, go on up there. Double colors would have been nice. Let's just discard an energy anyhow. Actually, let's give this to Victory Bell and Wafting Scent once again. We pretty much need to stall out until we can get this Quillfish powered up. So if we can confuse the opponent, make them unable to fight, that's definitely going to help us. And 
And they bring up the Victory Bell. Can you break through the confusion? Another Charizard EX hits the field. Okay. We dealt with you once before, I'm sure we can do it again. So they are getting set up three Charizard EXs in this deck. Okay then. And it does hurt itself, which is definitely a good thing for us. 60 HP left once again. Well, I think we're going to lose the Victor Bell eventually, so let's get the Quillfish ready to go. And another Del Fox hits the field. The, what is it, Mystical Fire lets them draw six cards. Now the Scorched Earth has been played. Blacksmith will attach two discarded fire energy to one of their fire Pokemon. They're down to 11 cards left in the deck. That's the nice thing about having two Delphox, too. You could use it's each one's ability once per turn. So you can use one of them, draw up to six cards, play as many of those as you can. Use the other Delphox's ability to draw, once again, up to six cards. And it breaks through confusion this time around. Doing a decent 220 damage. Quillfish is going to come up. Now we're going to be able to get the Poison Sting off. Nice and powerful. I'm going to give the Grass Energy to Quillfish. And Poison Sting to knock out that Delphox. We're one prize away. I don't think we're going to make it through this fight though. Because now if this has one more Fire Energy, they're going to knock out the Quillfish. Level Ball is played to find a Pokemon of 90 HP or less, which there are none of left in my opponent's deck. Will that be enough to knock it out? It will, okay. 90 damage from the Del Fox with the Blaze Ball. Although they're going to bring up Drag Algae. Interesting choice. We do actually survive that. So we're going to immediately retreat. And go for a Poison Sting. Delphox has been poisoned. Another training center is played. So we will lose Quillfish this turn, but we're going to get off the... My opponent's actually going to deck themselves out. Energy switch. Powering up that Delphox. Interesting. Interesting. Alright folks, my apologies, I wasn't able to get the final moments of that match on record because the unfortunate side effect of using a free recording software is you are limited in certain ways and this particular one has a 15 minute time limit on recording, so I didn't get the actual final couple turns there, but my, uh, I did win, just so you know, my opponent did deck themselves out unfortunately for their side. And I'm quite happy that the Victory Bell deck, I should say Victory Bell and Friends, managed to defeat the long accursed rival of this channel, Charizard EX. So, with that being the end of the match there, I'm uh, not sure what we're going to do for next week. I do want to eventually show a video of my revamped Swampert and Slurpuff deck with some Ancient Origins cards added to it. However, if you have an idea for a card that you want to see me build a deck around for next week, leave that in a comment down below. I'll see if I can put together a deck for next week's video. And otherwise, I will do the Swampert Slurpuff deck for next week. Alright, thank you for checking out this video. And another victory over Charizard EX is on our side. Alright, thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.